Hello everyone. Thank you for joining me again. Last night at about 10 o'clock, this channel hit 75,000 subscribers. Thank you for that. To celebrate, I want to share with you five cookie recipes that I think you and your family will enjoy. The first recipe is for coffee and spice cookies. Now these cookies have a crisp edge, a soft chewy center, and a tantalizing coffee, nutmeg, and cinnamon aroma. The recipe is from the 1950s, also known as the era of doo-wop. The recipe starts, as all good cookie recipes do, with a whole honking cup or 226 grams of room temperature butter. I'm using salted butter here, but you could use unsalted. And to the butter, I'm going to add two cups or 400 grams of brown sugar. You can use light brown or dark brown sugar. I'm also going to add two large room temperature eggs. And then we are going to cream this mixture until it turns light and fluffy. That's going to take about four minutes. I'm using my stand mixer, which is outfitted with a paddle attachment, but you could use electric beaters. While the butter mixture is creaming, I'm going to put together the dry ingredients. So I have three and a half cups or 456 grams of all-purpose or plain flour here. And to the flour, I'm going to add one teaspoon of baking soda, one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of ground nutmeg, and one teaspoon of ground cinnamon and just whisk these ingredients together. Our butter mixture is nice and fluffy, so now I'm going to beat in at low speed a half cup or 120 mils of cold coffee. Then I'm going to add the flour mixture a little at a time just beat that in at low speed. And that's all there is to this cookie dough. I'm going to give this a good stir with a spatula, just to make sure all of that flour is incorporated. Almost looks like chocolate or cafe au lait. To make the cookies easy to form, I'm going to chill this dough for about one hour in the refrigerator. All right, we are nice and cold here. About 15 minutes before you are ready to bake, preheat the oven to 400 degrees Fahrenheit or 200 degrees Celsius. Now let's form these cookies. The original recipe from 1950 says to form the cookies by rounded teaspoons. I'm using a slightly larger cookie scoop here. I'm spacing the cookies about two inches apart. This recipe is supposed to make four dozen cookies. Since I'm making larger size cookies, I'm not sure how many the recipe will yield for me, but I'm certainly not going to bake all of the cookies at one time, because if I bake all of them today, I will eat all of them today. So I'm going to freeze this cookie dough so that I can enjoy it at another time. Bake the cookies until they are set. That's going to take from eight to 10 minutes. Mm -hmm. 
And here are the cookies. They look just gorgeous and they smell terrific. I can really smell the coffee and the nutmeg and the cinnamon. I'm going to let them cool on the pan for about five minutes and then I will transfer them to a wire rack to cool completely. My cookies have cooled to room temperature. There were three on this plate. I have already eaten one. And let me tell you, these cookies are downright addicting. I'm enjoying them with a cup of cafe au creme, which is simply coffee with heavy cream. I have another bite for you. So the cookies have a crisp edge, a soft center. I think they are so remarkable. And I really love the scent of coffee, nutmeg, and cinnamon. Nobody makes these cookies anymore. I hope you will give them a try. And I will see you tomorrow with another cookie recipe. Good morning. I'm getting ready to make Grand Marnier cookies. These cookies are light, buttery, and perfectly perfumed with the orange essence of Grand Marnier. And the recipe starts just as yesterday's recipe did with one cup or 226 grams of softened butter. And I will be using my stand mixer again but you could use electric beaters. You could even use a large bowl and a stout wooden spoon. I'm going to use the paddle attachment on my mixer to beat the butter just until it's smooth. That will probably take all of 15 seconds. So now I'm going to beat in one cup or 125 grams of confectioner sugar. Scrape down the bowl. Then I'm going to beat in the yolk from one large egg. Then beat in one tablespoon of Grand Marnier. Scrape down the bowl once again. And I have to tell you, the essence of this Grand Marnier is really something. It's a very strong orange perfume. Finally, I'm going to beat in two cups or 260 grams of all-purpose or plain flour. And I'm going to add this a little at a time, at low speed. Give this one good mix with the spatula. And then cover the bowl with cling film. And then I'm going to let this chill for two to three hours in the refrigerator, or if you're in a rush, you can pop this into the freezer for 30 minutes. I think I'll put this in the freezer. While the dough is chilling, I'm going to clean up my workstation. Right, our dough is nicely chilled and my oven has preheated to 325 degrees Fahrenheit or 160 degrees Celsius. Now I need to form these cookies. I'm going to form them into one inch diameter balls. There's two ways you can do this. You can tear off clumps of dough and just roll them between the palms of your hands. Easy enough to do or you can use a cookie scoop, a one inch cookie scoop.
I think it is much easier to just pull off clumps of dough and roll them. And I'm spacing the cookies about one inch apart on the baking sheet. And my baking sheet is lined with parchment. Although I am serving these cookies at Christmas time, I would not necessarily call any of these Christmas cookies because you could serve them at any time of the year. And fortunately, none of them require decoration. No frosting, no royal icing. So they are very easy cookies to do. And of course, I will link this recipe in the description below. Depending on how large your marbles of dough are, this recipe can make up to four dozen cookies. Of course, I'm not going to bake that many today. I'm going to freeze the remaining dough. So I have four, eight, 12, 16, 20 cookies here. I'm going to pop these into the oven until the cookies just begin to color. That's going to take 20 to 25 minutes. look incredible and they smell terrific. You can really catch the aroma of the Grand Marnier. They have a wonderful orange perfume. I'm going to let these cool on the baking sheet for five minutes and then I will transfer them to a cooling rack to cool completely. And then at the end of this video I'm going to show you how I decorate them with nothing more than powdered sugar. Good afternoon. Today we're going to make chocolate chip cookies with fresh mint. I have the chocolate chips. I need the fresh mint. So let's make a quick trip to the farm store. We are home from the berry farm and I will be making the chocolate chip cookies with the fresh mint in just a little bit. But first, I want to make the batter for some rosette cookies that I'm going to cook later. So this batter is very simple. You do, however, need sifted flour, one cup of it. I'm going to weigh this for you. 120 grams. Now the reason I'm making this batter now is because it needs to chill for two to three hours. I'm using the recipe that came with my rosette and timbal set. I can link this in the description below, but I'm sure you can find this in any kitchen supply store. So I need two large eggs. I'm going to whisk these. Then I need one tablespoon of regular granulated sugar. Just whisk that in. Along with a quarter teaspoon of salt. Now I'm going to add about half of the flour. 
maybe a third of the flour and a third of the milk. You want to add the flour and the milk in alternating additions. My grandmother used to make these cookies, well, rosettes, every year at Christmas time. And I, as a child, ate way too many of them. They are unbelievably delicious. If you put these on a Christmas cookie table, they will be the first cookies that disappear. I promise. Okay, this is nice and smooth. Clean up what I spilled here. And I'm going to cover this and pop it into the refrigerator. And the reason you want to chill this is because according to the directions, the chilled batter will give you the crispus rosettes. Crispus? I think I meant crispiest rosettes. On to the chocolate chip cookies with fresh mint. So I have one and a half cups of all-purpose or plain flour. That's about 200 grams. Putting this in a small bowl. Half teaspoon of salt. One fourth teaspoon of baking soda. And whisk. These cookies are really refreshing. They are refreshing on the hottest day of summer, but they are equally delightful on the coldest day of winter. Then we need to chop the fresh mint that we bought at the berry farm. I need from a half cup to a full cup of mint. You can really use as much or as little as you like. Now the berry farm grows mint in greenhouses all winter long. So this mint is in mint condition, even in December. I'm going to coarsely chop this mint. So I'm gathering it into a bundle and then just start cutting. You don't want to cut the mint too finely because it's very nice to see the specks of mint in the cookies. Now I've received a lot of comments about this bench scraper, which I use, I think, in every cooking video. It's made by Wilton and I can link it in the description below if you are interested. I hate to tell you this, but we are going to need another bowl, just a small bowl. Into the bowl, I'm going to add one third cup or 60 grams of regular white sugar and a half cup or about 100 grams of light brown sugar, firmly packed. Let's mix the sugar. Then add that chopped mint Rub the mint leaves and the sugar together until the sugar becomes moist and very fragrant. Your fingers will become very fragrant too. Let me wash my hands and then I need to grab my stand mixer. In my 20s, whenever I wanted cookies, I just used a bowl and a stout spoon to cream the butter and sugar together. So you absolutely do not need a stand mixer. I just happen to have one, so that's what I'm using. And I'm going to start with 113 grams or a half cup of room temperature butter. And I'm going to cream the butter and the scented sugars together. I'm going to do this first at low speed, then at high. That looks light and fluffy. Now I'm going to beat in one whole egg. This is a large egg. I'm also going to beat in two teaspoons of pure vanilla extract. 
This smells wonderful already. At low speed, gradually beat in the flour mixture. And then use a spatula to beat in one cup or about 170 grams of either bittersweet or semi-sweet chocolate chips. I'm using little squares. They're called chocolate chunks. Let me clear the decks and then we can form the cookies. I'm going to use a one inch diameter cookie scoop to form one inch diameter balls. And I'm going to space the balls about two inches apart on the cookie sheet. Now my inspiration for these cookies was, believe it or not, those Girl Scout Thin Mint cookies. In the comments below, let me know if you've ever tried those Girl Scout cookies. They are, well, I'll be honest here. The Thin Mints are the only Girl Scout cookies that I actually enjoy. So I discovered the beautiful combination of chocolate and mint from those Thin Mints. And then I thought, why can't I add fresh mint to chocolate chip cookies? And the method worked out really well. The other inspiration was the fact that I had tons of fresh mint in my garden one summer, and I needed to use it. If you have any mint at all in your garden, you have tons of mint. I have 15 cookies on this baking sheet. I'm going to pop this into the refrigerator while I preheat the oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 180 degrees Celsius. I'm going to freeze the remaining cookie dough. While the marbles of dough are chilling, let's take a short walk in the boxwood garden. Just now, the snow looks like confectioner sugar on the green shrubs. Perhaps we will have a white Christmas this year. I'm going to pop these into the preheated oven. 12 minutes for soft cookies, 15 minutes for crisp. I like crisp cookies. time to make the rosettes, the beloved fried cookie from my childhood. Now I'm going to pour the batter we made earlier into this shallow baking dish and you'll see why in just a moment. And remember this batter did cool in the refrigerator. So here's my rosette iron gadget. I've already attached the star shape. Now I'm going to attach the actual rosette shape. And they just screw right on. Make sure they are screwed on all the way because you do not want them falling off when they hit the pan of hot fat. And then I have a baking sheet lined with flour sack cloth because it's very absorbent. You could use paper towels here. So I have about two inches of avocado oil in the skillet and I am heating it to 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 180 degrees Celsius. And you do want to check the temperature with either a digital thermometer or a candy thermometer. My oil is a little hot right now, so I have lowered the heat. Then take your rosette iron and set it in the hot oil to let it preheat. Blot the excess oil from the iron and then gently plunge the iron into the batter, 
taking care that the batter does not cover the top of the iron molds. Immediately plunge the iron into the hot oil until the batter dislodges itself. If necessary, use a chopstick to encourage the cookies to release from the iron. Fry the rosettes just until they are lightly golden, about 30 seconds. And here are the gorgeous rosettes and stars. This recipe actually makes 40 cookies, but somebody ate a lot of the cookies almost as soon as they came out of the hot fat. Hmm, wonder who that was. You can dust these with cinnamon and sugar while the rosettes are still warm, or you can let them cool completely, as I'm going to do, and dust them with confectioner sugar. You can even dust them with a combination of confectioner sugar and cinnamon. Well, we have one more cookie recipe to do. Actually, I need to try one of these for you. I want you to hear the crunch. These are as light as a feather. The taste of my childhood. We have one more cookie recipe to do. So I will see you back here tomorrow. Good morning. Well, it's day five, or maybe it's day four. I don't remember. Anyway, we are getting ready to make ginger snap cookies. Now these cookies can be crisp at the edge or crisp throughout, depending on how long you bake them. And the first thing you need to do is preheat the oven to 315 degrees Fahrenheit, which is, hold on, 157 degrees Celsius. And then in a smallish bowl, add one and two-thirds cups or 236 grams of all-purpose or plain flour. And to the flour I'm going to add a half teaspoon of baking soda and a half teaspoon of salt, two and one-fourth teaspoons of ground ginger, because these are ginger snaps after all, a half teaspoon of ground cinnamon, a quarter teaspoon of ground cloves, and a quarter teaspoon of ground black pepper. And then whisk these ingredients together. This is a very simple recipe. There's no need to use a stand mixer or even electric beaters. All you need is a couple of bowls and a whisk, and maybe a spoon, and maybe a spatula. And I know that oven temperature seems very low, but that's how these cookies are baked, low and slow. Then put the dry ingredients aside and grab a somewhat larger bowl. And to this bowl, add a half cup or 113 grams of melted butter salted or unsalted, your choice. To the butter, I'm adding a half cup or 100 grams of regular granulated sugar and a quarter cup or 50 grams of dark brown sugar. Then I'm going to beat the two sugars and the butter together with a spatula. Beat in a half teaspoon of pure vanilla extract two tablespoons of unsulfured molasses, the yolk from a large egg, and two tablespoons of milk. Simple ingredients, simple method, and fantastic results. Then add the dry ingredients to the wet and beat until a stiff dough develops. Ah, 
I think that ginger snaps are infinitely more interesting than regular ginger cookies. You may have a different opinion. This is one of the easiest cookie doughs to make. I'm going to clean my workstation and then we can move on to the next step. For this next step, put roughly a half cup or 100 grams of granulated sugar in a small bag. Then form the dough into one inch balls. A one inch diameter cookie scoop is helpful here. Actually, my cookie scoop is about one and a half inches. And then six or seven at a time, put the balls in the little bag of sugar. And then space the cookies about two inches apart on a parchment lined cookie sheet. These first cookies look a little large, so now I'm using a proper one, one inch diameter cookie scoop. So I have 18 balls of dough on this cookie sheet and I have at least enough for 18 additional cookies right here in this bowl, but I'm going to freeze this leftover cookie dough and just bake these today. Now these go into the preheated oven until the cookies flatten out. And for cookies that are crisp at the edge, you want to bake them for about 18 minutes. If you want cookies that are crisp throughout, bake them two minutes longer, about 20 minutes. These cookies look gorgeous and they all sparkle with the sugar they were rolled in. I can't wait to tuck into one. I'm going to let these cookies cool to room temperature and then I'm going to brew a pot of tea and light a fire in the parlor. It's snowing outside. I think we should have a little cookie party. And the only cookies that required any decoration at all, if you can call it decoration, are the rosettes and the Grand Marnier cookies. I simply dusted them with confectioner's sugar. And I've already eaten of one of the ginger snaps and oh boy, delicious. Darjeeling from Tierra Farm. It's my very favorite tea.
Let's bring our cookies and our tea into the parlor. This is the first time in my life that I have made five cookies in four, or was it five, days. And although I am serving the cookies at Christmas time, they would indeed be delicious at any time of the year. I hope you will give one or all of them a try. I'm going to try one of the chocolate chip with fresh mint cookies. Don't make me beg you to try this cookie. The combination of fresh mint and chocolate is just out of this world. Again, I will post the links to the recipes in the description below. Thank you for spending time with me. In the next episode, I'm planning to do more holiday recipes. I can pop a couple of my other videos up here or up here that you can watch between now and my next upload. In the meantime, take good care of yourself, enjoy some cookies, and I will see you in the next episode. Bye for now.